Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guiding Q, and I did a video on using Generate Series to create a date or timetable in your fabric warehouse. And as a result, got a couple of questions. And there's always a lot of questions, but these two questions really, really intrigued me. They sparked my interest, and so I decided to do a follow up video on it. The first question was, why didn't you do this in Power BI? And I was like, well, I need to use my date and timetable across multiple different solutions, other semantic models in a warehouse, in a lake house, in other compute engines and fabric. And so if I localize it to Power BI, then I can't use it in Power BI. Well, not 100% true. I'll do a video and show you what I'm talking about. But Power BI is purest form if I'm creating an import model or direct query model, model publishing it out. It's localized to that model, and then I have to recreate all that logic in every semantic model that I want. I don't wanna do that. I'm not lazy. Remember, come here. I'm just really efficient. I don't want to recreate this or maintain logic in multiple places. And so that's why I created it in the warehouse. The second question was, hey, can you show us how to use fabric in a solution? And I was like, huh, that lends itself very well to number one, the first question. If I want to reuse this in other solutions like semantic models, like a warehouse, that's why I would create this in fabric. You know how we like to do? Enough of all this talking, Patrick. You talk way too much. Let's head over to my laptop. Let me show you. For everyone that hadn't watched the video on Generate Series, I use Generate Series to create a single column table, and then I use that single column table to derive dates and years and quarters and months and things like that. So now I have a date table, and now I can reuse that date table across multiple solutions. But let's say I didn't have this date table. Let me show you how this would work. For everyone that's new to warehousing and things like that, if I didn't have the date table, Table, this would be the query I write because if I want to analyze this by month, by year, by day, I need to extract out year, month, date names from the date that's in my fact table or the detail table that I'm working with. And if I run this query, you'll see that I'm just getting aggregation because right here I'm saying select year from, and then you can see it's by year, and then I have my amount. I can put an order by the order by year. And it's the same thing, right? I did this one. This one is by month. So let's run this query. Here we go. We'll run this query and I'll show you this query in a little bit. Same thing. I had to extract out and you can see this is by month. I'm filtering it to 2014 and I'm grouping by month and month number because I'm sorting it by month number because that's the way I want to sort it. If I don't have a date table, then I have to do these types of things. But and this goes to that second question. If I built a date table or a timetable, this would work with either one into my solution. Instead of writing all these derivations, these derive, you know, instead of extracting out using all these functions to extract out year, month, date name and all that, I can simply use my date table. You can see here's my dim date. I'm joining on that date key. And if I run this, I get the exact same results. Much cleaner query, saving on some click tags. Same thing with the month and the year. It just works. It's really simple. It's clean. And my query is easier. That's me using it in the warehouse where it's created. But what if I want to use it in a lake house or a semantic model? It still works. So if I hop over to a notebook and in my notebook, you can see I have a lake house attached to the notebook and I've created a shortcut. You can tell by that little icon right there. I've created a shortcut to them date for this lake house. Now, if I didn't have that table, I would write a very similar query. You can see same thing, common table expression, deriving year from that date and then doing the grouping. But because I have my table here, I write a really simple query. I mean, look at the syntax between the two. So much simpler, just a simple join and a group by and a sum. And that's my query. So that date table is for me to analyze through time intelligence across the different computes using that one table because there's someone in my organization that's an expert on how we do dates. They've implemented all this logic in this central place. So if I'm using my lake house, my warehouse, I just pull whatever logic they're adding automatically. I don't have to do anything and it just works. Let me show you one more example. We can't have this video without showing Power BI, right? So let's say I just imported that fact order from my warehouse or my lake house. You can import. You don't have to do direct lake. You still can connect via the SQL endpoint. I can use the built-in auto time intelligence and it automatically gives me year, quarter, month, day. But what if I want week? What if I want fiscal year? What if I want month number? What if I want different types, different columns on it? What would I do if I didn't have my central date or timetable? In this case, what you would do is use the, what's become a controversial topic is add a new column here. I would probably go turn off auto date time and then add all the columns I want. Or what you can do is you can create something a little more elegant by using the date table. And so the first thing I would do is turn off all these implicit measures. So you can go to your model view, click on model, and then look right here, it says discourage implicit measures. 
I would turn all those off because it doesn't make sense to aggregate things like year, month, and things like that. And there were implicit measures there. So I turn it off. Then I have to create a quick measure. So we're in a new measure. I'm going to call this total sales equals some sales amount. So we create our quick measure. And then we're going to go over here. We're going to create a relationship on my date. So I'm using this in my solution. I can use this, like I said, my warehouse, my lake house. There's my relationship. And then what I'm going to do is go over here and mark this as a date table. So I can do time intelligence types of things. So I'm going to do that. Turn it on. Choose my date column. Click save. And now if I go back to the report, that auto date time is going on to add any calculated columns because it's using the logic that's built in here. I choose this choose that and there you go, right? And so I can look at this as a table or a bar chart, but you can see there's the values I have. All right, what do you think? Do you have any questions, comments? Are you using date or timetables in Fabric? Generate series provides a great option combined with shortcuts and other different types of technologies. You should check it out. But if you do have any questions or comments, you know what to do. Post them in the comments below. If you want to learn more about Fabric or any of the workloads in Fabric, there's probably a video flying above my head. And as always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.